Um, I'm Leah Dozer. I'm with Independence Bank. I'll start things off with um, bridge loans. Um, in today's fast-paced market, it is important to have the most appealing offer on the table. The ability to purchase a home without contingency can really help you win in a bidding war. And um, a lot of people have heard of bridge loans, but they're not as familiar of the ins and outs of bridge loans. So I'll just kind of discuss it briefly. Um, a bridge loan is a short-term loan, typically less than 12 months, where you can use the equity in your current home to help purchase a new home. So oftentimes it's used as a source of funding until a person removes an existing debt obligation and secures permanent financing. So in this case, like, you know, selling their old home and then refinancing um, the new home. And um, this is an example scenario. Um, let's just say you have a client who owns a property valued at 350000 um, their current loan on the property is um, 175000 and they um, purchase a property with a contract price of 450000 Depending on um, the bank or the financial institution, you can um, have a bridge loan at 80 to 85% of the total value of both properties. So in this case, the total value on both properties is 800000 So you could have a possible bridge loan all the way up to 680000 so with that 680,000, that pays off the, the current mortgage of 175, the new sales price, and then the excess of 55,000 can go toward um, you know, closing costs, prepaid items, and then possible improvements to the property that you're about to sell. So um, that can be very helpful. Um, now, after you sell your current home of 350,000, then you end up netting after the realtor commission, you get to net maybe about 329. Then you'll subtract your um, 329 from the current bridge loan amount of 680. So that, that'll leave you a balance of about 351,000 that can be refinanced into permanent financing. And so the next slide is kind of just like a visual of how that looks. Um, so existing property plus new property total amount then sell existing property, then your final property. Um, there are some advantages of having a bridge loan. It's interest only payment, so it can keep your monthly payment manageable. Um, you're using the current home to help purchase a new home, so you can possibly take um, up to 85% cumulative loan to value. Um, possible less stress since you can have both homes at the same time. So you've got that ability to make improvements on the new home, such as new paint, new flooring, updates that need to be done before moving in. And then you get to move into the new home, then stage the old home to sell. So just having that, that flexibility can be to your advantage and make things a little bit less stressful. Um, but there are also disadvantages. Um, the disadvantage with a bridge loan, it's a short-term loan. So after the 12 months or what have you, you'd need to refinance it into permanent financing. Um, bridge loan rates are typically higher than the current uh, market's conventional rates. Um, you know, conventional rates can yield anywhere from 2%, 3%. Bridge loan rates are typically about 4%, maybe 5%. Um, the closing costs tend to be higher. You're, you're typically paying 1% you know, origination. Um, there's no escrowing. So you have to be responsible to pay your taxes and insurance um, every month. Um, and this is something that has happened before. In this environment, I don't know so much. I feel like all the values are, are pretty high, but I've seen it before where the value of the home could possibly decrease by the time that you're ready for your permanent financing. Um, about five years ago, that happened to one of my clients and they actually had to bring money to the table to pay down their, their loan. So um, hopefully knock on wood in this environment, that wouldn't be the case. Um, and then also the fixed mortgage rates may be higher by the time you're ready for permanent financing. So those are some of the disadvantages. Um, you know, bridge loans may not be perfect for everyone, but depending on the situation, it could be a possible way to get a person into the house um, with less stress. And Kelly, do you want to, you can go ahead and start talking about the equity. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as Leah mentioned, you know, a lot of times when we get these situations that come up when you all are trying to take a buyer to buy another house um, and they don't want to sell, they don't 
or not initially sell have a non-contingent offer. We're trying to get creative in what options might work best for them. Um, each one of these options that we're talking about might fit one client better than the other. So, um, you know, to say one is better than the other initially, um, you know, for you all to kind of tell your client, hey, get a bridge loan or hey, do this or hey, do that. Um, it may not be smart until we kind of sit down and look at what their financial needs are and then figure out from there, you know, again, what fits that client in particular. So, so another option that we um, see happen uh, frequently is just using the equity that they have in their current home um, and doing an equity line. Um, you know, one of the things that you'll see at the end of my slide, I mean, this gets a little difficult. Sometimes banks maybe don't necessarily want to uh, lend on a home when they know it's getting ready to go on the market. So you kind of have to, I mean, if you have time to do it um, well in advance of when they want to put their house on the market, that definitely helps. Um, so here's kind of what happens with the equity lines. Um, most of, and it varies by banking institution, most banking institutions are at about 80% loan to value um, with what they currently owe and what we want to do as far as an equity line. Um, there are some banks that will go up to 100%. I mean, I'm not highly suggesting that at all because obviously you've got a commission percent to come out of there. You've got some tax prorations, you've got some tax stamps, et cetera. So when I'm talking to a client, I'm suggesting that they don't go anything more than about 90% so that they have um, plenty of money when they sell their house and they're not bringing money to closing. Uh, kind of what Leah mentioned a while ago in terms of a bridge loan, if a house goes down in value, you know, we don't really want to have and you don't want, you know, a seller to have to bring that money to closing. So next slide, Leah. Okay, um, so with an equity line, okay, so Leah mentioned, you know, a bridge loan might have some additional cost. Um, the equity line has a low cost to obtain it. Um, some banks will charge something up front, some banks won't. Um, and what you have is you have a situation where most equity lines come with a three year ter early termination penalty, call it a prepayment penalty, whatever you want to say. But it's really for them to recover their cost because they're going to do an appraisal, they're going to do a title search. They're going to have processing and underwriting, and sometimes they may not charge the customer a penny up front. Well, if that person pays that equity line off in two to three months, they need to recoup those costs. So, you know, I just basically, when I'm educating my consumers and buyers, I'm just basically saying, those are your costs, whether you pay them up front or you pay them later, there's still something that have, you're going to have to incur. Um, much like the bridge loan, these will typically have the interest only payment attached to them. Um, there are some where you can get it with pay a little principal, but honestly, there's no need to do that when you're just trying to um, use this short term to um, get you, bridge you, et cetera, to the new home. Um, now, qualifying wise, I think where the bridge loan, where Leah, her option would be, you know, you've got an interest only payment on both loans or one loan that's six hundred thousand um, dollars, that payment's going to be probably low. In this case, what we've got is we they may have a mortgage on their existing home. We got to count that. The new mortgage on the new home, we've got to count that, and then we have to count a payment on this equity line to get them into the next house. So some um, buyers are maybe not as financially um, sound to be able to do this, and a bridge loan might be the best option for them. So. Um, and with this, with an equity line, we can be in a first or second lien position. Um, I've got a client right now who called the other day. He owes $30,000 on his first mortgage. He says, I want to do a line for $150,000. I want to pay off that thirty, dollars So then I have $120,000 left to go play with when it's time for me to buy my next house. So in that case, um, that makes sense because he can get rid of um, a larger payment on that $30,000 and have a smaller payment on the 30,000 equity piece until such time as he needs it to buy the next house. So next slide, Leah. Um, so the thing with an equity line is if they don't get it set up early initially, maybe before they put the house on the market, you what you may have, because this is a refinance, you may have a little bit longer time to wait. Plus they have a three day right to cancel on any type of a refinance. So we kind of have to plan that out when we know uh, what, needs to happen if we're trying to do it back to back with the purchase, we can't do it back to back because we have to have that three day waiting period. So that um, could be a deterrent. Um, and again, as I mentioned early on, some banks won't lend if they know the house is gonna go on the market soon. 
Um, you know, in this market right now, if you have um, sellers who think they're going to put their house on the market in the next four to six months, if this is an option for them, I would suggest that they go ahead and get it set up now. Um, and then always, you know, they need to check with their CPAs. Uh, first mortgages, purchase money is typically tax deductible with the mortgage interest. Um, but the equity lines a couple of years ago when they changed the tax laws, that changed a little bit. So they definitely need to check with their CPA um, about the mortgage deductions. So, OK, um, an option that I see happen um, a lot um, is what's called a recast. Um, and what happens here is a lot of borrowers many of them have some cash reserves. And so if they have the ability to put 5% down initially um, on the new mortgage, they can do that. And then once their house sells, we can do what's called this recast, which they can take their proceeds from the sale of their home, apply it down on the new um, home, the new loan. And then what we can do is redo a payment based on that new principal balance. So for example, let's just say we start with a $2,000 payment they put $100,000 down and now we reduce that payment to $1,400. Um, that can be done. Um, and so what happens initially when you do 5% down, you've got that PMI attached to that loan. People don't wanna pay the PMI for a long time, but that PMI kind of eliminates the cost for the equity line or the cost for the bridge loan. So the minimal couple of months that they might have that is not that bad compared, and compared to what some of the other options might be. Um, and this does not require refinancing. Um, it just, what they'll do is, and some banks will charge a fee to this. Some banks won't charge a fee for doing this, but you take that lump sum, you get rid of the PMI and you lower your payment. Okay. Um, you know, one thing for this, that's one mortgage process. It's one set of closing costs. I think that kind of varies a little bit from where we are with the bridge loans and where we are with the equity line. You know, it's just one loan. It's just the normal process that you all are typically used to anyway. Um, if you want to do your 21 to 45 day close period, um, that will work out well versus the others that might take a little bit of extra time. Um, and then with this, um, you'll qualify on your existing loan that you have plus the new loan plus the PMI. Um, and again, not all banks offer this. So if you are working with um, your lender, you just need to make sure if this is something that you're uh, customer is interested in that you connect them with a bank that potentially offers this. So, so that's the wrap on how do you buy a house um, non-contingent uh, right now. And I know in this market these days, it's very important to try to be able to do this. Uh, do this. So do you have any questions for us? Yes. So if you have questions, just you can put those in the chat and the um, panelists will be able to see those. I will also read those out to everyone. Uh, we'll give that a couple of um, a couple of seconds to be able to give you time to type that in. If you do have a question, um, I would like to thank Leah and Kelly for the great information. We will be putting this uh, recording on um, our YouTube channel so that you can go back and refer to it. We'll also uh, link it into our Realtor Direct e-news next week. So if you uh, wanted to watch it again and easily find the link, we'll have it in there. And um, it will be, like I said, listed on our YouTube channel under our industry updates. We've got a couple more industry updates coming up this month. One will be on staging outdoor spaces and the other will be on uh, high back systems with home warranty. So um, make sure that you get signed up for those. And um, doesn't appear that we have any questions at the moment. Uh, Leah, Kelly, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? Well, thanks for the opportunity to share knowledge and, you know, contact us with any questions or concerns. We're always happy to help. Absolutely. I ditto what Leah's responses are. We're here for you all uh, as affiliates and we're not the only lenders that are affiliates. So you, the lender you might be working with is an, might be an affiliate as well. So uh, definitely uh, reach out to any of us. Uh, we're happy to help. Yeah. And we do have a find affiliate option on louisvillerealtors.com. If you want to check to see if the person that you're uh, working with is an affiliate with the Greater Louisville Association of Realtors. Um, also, it will have um, Leah and Kelly's contact information. I don't know if you all want to share maybe your email or phone number um, to, to if anybody has questions after this. Sorry. I had somebody walk in my office. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
So do you all want to share maybe your email that if people oh. want to contact you directly? I'm sorry. Um, sure. Mine is uh, kelly.lee. It's K-E-L-L-Y dot Lee, L-E-E at cbandt.com. Mine is um, L Dozer, so L D O Z E R at 1776bank.com.